Hello everyone, it is another legendary hero guide today to try and finish off all the legendaries before we get swamped with any more ones that might get released like the fear we got creeped on. So here is Emery's the cavalry commander, so stay tuned for everything you're gonna need to know with me, Mr. Sneaky. Hello, so yes, we're going over Emery's. He's the OG of the cavalry guys, he was one of the very first commanders in the game. He came out with Alistair, there was only those two boys, so that was your choice. And then obviously Bakshi showed up later on and kind of dethroned Emery's, as I would say, as like the number one choice. But it doesn't mean Emery's is bad. So let's go over Emery's and everything you need to know about him. Why, why is he still good? What's he used for? And obviously his talents and his skills, right? So. Emery's is really cool. He's um, got the cavalry PvP mobility tree. One of the cool things about him is the fact that he has that mobility tree. It allows him to be a very, very pesky flanker if you're going to choose to opt him as your primary commander with the Bakshi behind him. Or if you don't have Bakshi, a expertised Alistair behind him would be great. So when you go into it, we'll go into all the talents later, but in his skills these are the things that are almost very very unique to him and it allows him later to create a very very interesting actual combo in the game that we've been experimenting with on super server one which is a little tip to you know see when you hit the end of the video so right when you go into skill one it is a very easy easy to read it is 1k and you do a 1500 damage nuke. It obviously is near because the cavalry are close melee ranged units. So for 1500 damage nuke, bang, it does the exact same damage as a Nika does, just to give you guys as a comparison. But Nika also gives you the 30% health reduction. So this is already worse than Nika, right? But the difference is with Emery's is he does a 1500 damage nuke, and his skill 2 isn't a PvE talent. This talent is a very relevant PvP one. And it's a 40% rage increase on his rage accumulation speed. Which is insanity. It does allow you to pump out this skill 1 so frequently. Or your skill cycling, should I say, gets ramped up so much more because of this skill. That... It is so powerful. It is actually a really powerful ability to do when you're trying to go for pure nuking through cycling of skills, right? When you go into his skill three, it is the, I would say, standard 40% buffs. So you get a 30% physical attack buff and you only get a 10% march speed bonus when you're using cavalry. Obviously these are all cavalry unit based buffs as you can see on screen. And then on number four, Four, and this is the interesting, I think it's a very interesting ability to have. It allows you to have, when you surround a unit, you deal a bonus 5% more skill damage. So if there's multiple Emery players and multiple Cavalry players, like the game's trying to attend with this unit, and you all hit the same target, you're all going to gain, in total, a 15% skill damage bonus. So that is a massive increase on that first skill. Plus, you also, and this is just a generic, you also increase all damage dealt by Emery's Legion by 10%. There's no requirements for that. So no matter what, your march is dealing 10% more than anyone else's naturally through your skills, right? So it's a very cool ability to have. And when you look at in his actual expertise, he gains an additional skill and it says when attacked, there's a 20% chance to gain passion that increases rage accumulation speed by 20% for 5 seconds. But if the commander legion already has passion, it will directly end passion and it will gain 100 range. And this effect triggers every 2 seconds. So the way this works is when you're gaining passion through certain effects like <clears throat> this one for example and you're gaining 40% rage and then when you get hit if you would gain another stack of passion instead of waiting the five seconds and gaining that 40% bonus, you instantly gain that 100 range and then it triggers a new 40% timer and it just keeps going. And, and then because of that, 
Your energy gear is off the charts. He's the fastest skill nuking champion in the game because of it. And he's almost like Khan in that regard. But Khan obviously had the RNG from Rise of Kingdoms. This guy is just pure bang, 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 as fast as possible with the thing, right? So obviously I've already mentioned it. A Bakshi primary with Emery's behind is an amazing combo. It keeps Bakshi alive um, for a little bit longer and it deals a way more damage than you would expect. The thing is having Bakshi primary is better in my opinion because you get access to that skill tree. And when you do look into the skill talents, you do get, you know, 15% more skill crit damage. Plus you do get an additional, you know, 10% scroll skill crit focus by 10 percent and it's just it's so much synergy and that's what you want you just want big fast quick damage and then out right you can run emery's as well um with alistair if you don't have bakshi that's obviously another option obviously you can run alistair also if you have him expertise as the primary because you have the tank tree and the tank tree allows you to just survive the field you don't care about damage because you already have the damage with Emery's, right? So that's why it's actually really good to run those other heroes and have Emery's as the secondary. But if you do run him as the primary, you have some good trees to run. You know, we're gonna go over those in a second. But when you're looking at his skills, as you can see, I've kind of stopped leveling him up. When I do get some more skills, I'm gonna try and wait until the next season reset. But you do want him as a 5-1-1-1 commander. And when you do get more heads, you do want him to be the most optimal Emery's is actually at 5-5-1-1. Five, five, one, and one. This just allows you to obviously get the bonuses you want from these two skills, which is nice. But having that 40% rage accumulation and that 1500 damage nuke is key for this march to work very, very well. So just remember that when you're looking at the skills. So having a 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one is good. You could stop investing. You don't have to worry about it really. If you're looking for investment choice, that's what you could do and chill out for a moment and go into something else, right? So that's all of his skills and like pairings to go over. As you can see, I've got this equipped to him. This isn't what you want to use. It's just because every time I keep switching units, you do, you know, replace these. But the Centaur's Boar is a great choice if you're looking for when you're closing the gap to do some um, damage, you know, on the way. If you've already got your artifact skills cycled up and you're trying to close down a second target, for example, it's really good. Or you could run something like the Solon's Blade, which is the key one. The key one is just like, everyone runs it. I've got it on my um, Elena at the moment, because I kind of use Elena as a primary commander for cavalry as well. She's a really good primary for it. So I do enjoy it. So when you go into his talent pages though for Emery's, like I say, I've gone for this route at the moment. This is going for a full cavalry route. If you go the full cavalry route, it is all about dealing the most amount of damage and getting in and out of combat. These are the skills I would run, as you can see. Your major keelstone gives you all units lead and gain 1% attack speed and 5% march speed or inherently. You get more march speed here. For me, gaining more physical attack or increasing your attacks more key than dealing more damage over normals or taking less skill damage because you just want to be able to nuke someone hard and get out. With that in mind, increasing your rage by 50 by 10% is a great effect to have because it is obviously you want to get as much rage as fast as possible. Get in, get out, and done. Nothing else. And then you have a choice, but for me, it's a quite straightforward choice. Perfect for us. It gives you a 15% increase in skill hero damage dealt for 10 seconds, which is insane when you end some battle. You do get this, it's for 10 seconds, but you will hit skill one from the amount of rage generated from Emery's no matter what and you will hit this so you get an extra 15% of damage here just to put that in iteration I love swift analysis taking 4% less counter attack damage during the fight so you basically stay as healthy as possible as you can before your skill hits them because your skill is always going to hit them first if you're generally running an Emery's Taking less damage while marching towards them again is amazing, so you, you can hit them as fast as possible. And when you do kill them, I love healing at the end of the battlefield, so you can maybe potentially kill someone else and kill someone else. And especially if you're cleaning up only red marches with him and you're getting in some free healing off it, 
you'll be surprised how quickly you can heal back up with this, right? And for me, Blood Bark finishes it off, giving yourself more damage on casting Rage Skills is just a great effect on what you want to be doing in killing out a target. <clears throat> now, when you go into Mobility though, Mobility is a very good tree to run. You want to go obviously through your March Speed, and you can choose again for more Physical Attack, which is what I go for. And then in the last section, you can choose to get more counter attack damage to, to actually deal with them. You can deal more normal attack damage, or you can go straight down the middle, like I, I suggest, and have maximum march speed. Because you want to, if you go down this march speed route and you have a massive 10% here and 10% march speed here, plus the 5% here, plus the 6% here, your march zooms so quickly towards people that if they're not watching you, you can outflank archers and kill them so quickly and get out. And that's the reason why I do enjoy it. And then swift maneuvers, if you're leaving a building resource node, you can gain some nice um, vigor, which is um, haste and HP by 20%. But in, when you're in Legion enters battle, the attack is increased by 10% and it reduces by 0.5 every second. This again is a great one. I would use this straight away. It allows you in the initial fight to burst them down. And then when this hits 10 seconds, you've already dealt your big damage with your ferocity. So then it basically comes out of combat. You should hopefully kill the target because he was already on like 50%. And then you move on to your next one. So <clears throat> that is the mobility tree. When you go to the final one, the PvP one, the PvP one is another <laughs> a really good tree you can run. Overall attack giving you more damage and then for me having max overall march speed again for 10% is a great factor to have for cavalry. And then you have two options. You can have maximum for your overall HP, meaning your troops are more have more health. So they survive longer in the battlefield so you can technically deal more damage in the open field because health is one of the best, uh, if not the best stat in the open field which people prioritize. And then if you're not going for health is obviously high spirits to double up on your high spirits here to gain a hundred rage every 10 percent when you're hitting a normal attack basically so it's a great effect to have you'll be instantly bang on max things and then for me army of valor isn't really too great because you do increase your damage by one percent for 10 seconds so you can do this and if you time it just right you might get a seven percent damage increase when your first skill triggers with this 15 percent so you get you know a decent amount of damage dealt but when you have a counter attack damage um effect in the you know in the game which i kind of enjoy you have a 10 percent chance to reduce all damage taken by one percent and like the fact is like when you're trying to close down the target this might have an opportunity to you know, trigger when you're fighting and someone else is fighting you, you know, people swarm you with cavalry, so reducing the amount of wounds you can take is very, very key, so that's why I do enjoy the look of a draw, so when you're in PvP, you can kind of go either one, the really good either way, but that pretty sums up, guys, Emery's the cavalry hero, he's one of the OG guys, like I say, you gotta show him love, the elf lord, he, um, he does all sorts of greatness, so... If you've got all the way to the end of the video, thank you for watching. You know, I'm going to give you one secret tip, which you guys who make it all the way as far have, you know, not haven't got yet. But one thing in Super Server 1, which we've been testing, is a Nika Primary with Emery's Behind as a Rally or PvE content. So if you're going to kill forts, this combo, you'll be surprised how much damage this deals. If you go and test it out yourself with a 5111 Nika and a 5111 Emery's, you'll be so surprised how much damage this can lay out on, on a fort. So that's like a little secret tip. I you know, just maybe go, go and test it out. I wouldn't try and say it's going to be the new meta. I wouldn't say, you know, invest all your heads in this combo, but it's a rare, very, very interesting combo to run. But that is everything you, you need to know about Emery's guys. So if you enjoyed that video, smash a like, comment and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. So peace out.